resiliency. What doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Our bodies adapt. And this is all facilitated by master regulators. And I talk about master regulators on this channel all the time, and it probably just goes in one ear and out the other. It's Thomas with his gobbledygook. But a master regulator is a very important thing, and I'm gonna give a very clear understanding of what that is, specifically surrounding something called FOXO3, F-O-X-O-3. Now, I know before you turn off this video thinking it's gonna be super boring, let me tell you, this is probably some of the most exciting research that is being done in the world of longevity, in the world of metabolic optimization, and in the world of oxidative stress. It is fascinating. So first, what is a master regulator? So a master regulator is something that controls a lot of things. So for example, PGC1A, that is a master regulator for the mitochondria to get stronger. PPAR alpha is a master regulator for a cell to learn how to use fats. AMPK is a master regulator for everything associated with caloric restriction. FOXO3 is a master regulator for our body to respond to a stress. We grow and get stronger from stress. If we enable and weaken our bodies, we don't deal with that stress well. And that's what FOXO3 is all about. So we're gonna dive into what it does and also how you can increase it because that's what's really important. Today's video is sponsored by Thrive Market. So go ahead and check them out. They're an online membership-based grocery store. So no matter what kind of eating style or eating pattern you have, they probably have something for you. It's like a one-stop shop. So maybe you're paleo, maybe you're keto, whatever. You can filter by different diet type. You can select what you want, add it to your cart, do whatever you wanna do. The prices are super competitive. A lot of times you'll find better prices on Thrive Market than you will at a lot of grocery stores. And it gets delivered to your doorstep in a couple of days and makes it super easy. Plus, because you're watching a video that they're sponsoring, that link down below will save you 25% off your first order and you'll get a free gift. So check them out down below in the description after this video. Before we can explain anything, we have to understand what a transcription factor is. A transcription factor is ultimately what signals the body to make a genetic change or to express a specific gene, okay? So in theory, any cell that is in our body can express any protein that's in our genome. So in theory, any cell in our body could actually express and create insulin, but it doesn't quite work like that because insulin is obviously created in our beta cells, in our pancreas, okay? And the genes for insulin are silenced in other cells. So what happens is even though our brain cells could produce insulin, they are silenced for that coding, okay? This silencing is called methylation, okay? So a methyl group is attached and it silences that. This is epigenetic regulating at its finest. Now, what does this mean? Because I know this is kind of complicated. But essentially what it means is if you were to consume carbohydrates, your glucose goes up. Well, that glucose then has a cascade of different things and that triggers what is called a transcription factor that initiates the expression of DNA to ultimately produce insulin. If that same transcription factor told every cell in our body to produce insulin and some of it wasn't silenced, you could see how we'd have a big problem. That is how we have a specific hierarchy and specific category of what cells express what. The genetic stuff is really cool. What does that have to do with FOXO3? Well, FOXO3 is the transcription factor that has to do with a stress response. Things like cold exposure, things like caloric restriction, things like oxidative stressors, they are stressed to our body and they trigger FOXO3 to make changes to our genetic system, if you wanna call it that, to make us stronger. If we didn't have FOXO3, we would not adapt. We would not adapt to exercise, we would not adapt to stress. You see how it's that important, right? This is a very important thing. There's a study that was published in the journal Cells that found that FOXO3 is imperative because it comes into play with caloric restriction, it comes into play with oxidative stress, with hypoxia when we're short on oxygen, even with DNA damage. So let's expand a little bit more. One thing we need to know is that insulin is a main inhibitor of FOXO3. Does that mean you should never spike your insulin, you should never eat a carbohydrate? No, it's just important for us to understand because in our society we have a problem with chronically high levels of insulin. So we potentially have a problem of chronically inhibiting this stress response, positive stress response. 
You see, what happens is when insulin is present or insulin is high, it stops FOXO3 from actually doing its job properly. It forces it to phosphorylate and actually bind in the nucleus and then get excreted. So when it's excreted because it's been bound in the nucleus, it doesn't get to do its job. It doesn't get to activate other things. This is important because it still matters. Insulin plays a role in the balance between mTOR and growth and adaptation and resilience. So it's like that constant balance, right? Anyhow, that's not really here nor there. Let's talk about what FOXO3 does with oxidative stress first. So oxidative stress is the stress that occurs when we exercise or the stress that occurs just from stress or from cold exposure or from heat. And there's really three ways we deal with oxidative stress. One, we prevent it. Two, we can kind of uh, neutralize it or intercept it. And three, we repair from it. It's a three-step, three-pronged process. Turns out that FOXO3 plays a role in all three things. So let's first start with the prevention side. There are these things called metallotheanines. These metallotheanines contain something called cuppers. What the heck is a cupper? Well, a cupper actually has an electrical charge. And this electrical charge can help neutralize an oxidative stressor before it ever becomes a big problem. Well, it turns out that FOXO3 plays a role in the creation of these metallotheanines. So without FOXO3, we don't really have the neutralizing effect that prevents an oxidant from ever fully forming in the first place. Okay, then how does FOXO3 play a role when it comes down to intercepting or sort of neutralizing an oxidant that's already doing bad things? Well, we have these things called dismutases. Maybe you've heard of superoxide dismutase 1 or superoxide dismutase 2 or glutathione peroxidase. What these things do, they're endogenous antioxidants, is they dismutase superoxides. That doesn't help me much. What does that mean? It means they dismantle these heavy oxidative stressors. They dismantle them really at their core so we can neutralize them and deal with them. It turns out that the transcription of these endogenous antioxidants is actually regulated by FOXO3 at its core. So FOXO3 actually helps us produce and transcribe and create and express these endogenous antioxidants. There was a study that was published in the journal IUBMB Life that demonstrated that FOXO3 was the most potent stimulator of endogenous antioxidants. The most potent stimulator. So without FOXO3 being activated from stress, we really do lose the ability to deal with stressors. Okay, then what about the third prong of this, the actual repair side? Well, it gets interesting there too. When cells go through damage and proteins are damaged, they can either be repaired or they can be reduced. Now, when you go through this reduction process, this reducing process, it is facilitated by something called thioreduxin reductase. It's a hard word to say because they're kind of back to back. Well, this thioreduxin reductase is also, guess what? Stimulated by FOXO3. Wow, this three-headed monster all seems to come right back to FOXO3. Now let's talk about something that you might be familiar with, autophagy. Autophagy is the cellular recycling that we probably know of when it comes to fasting. What does FOXO3 have to do with autophagy? Okay, well think about this for a second. Okay, when you have a cell, you look at a picture of a cell on a computer or in a textbook, it looks like it's this nice spacious environment, right? It's not like that at all. It's cramped inside a cell. Okay, and think of it as like a studio apartment with 20 people living in it. It's cramped. It's uncomfortable. And then what happens is as like decrepit cells start to form and proteins start to form, there's no room for these components. There's no room for proteins that are just not supposed to be there. So now you have 40 people in this studio apartment. You need to induce autophagy to get rid of the people that are taking up the wasted space in the apartment and kick them out. You need to do that in your cell too. And this is autophagy. It turns on the vacuum that sucks out the people that don't do any work and gets them out of there. You don't do dishes in my apartment, you're gone. You don't make the bed in my apartment, you're gone. That's autophagy. There was a study that was published in the journal PLOS1 Genetics that found that FOXO3 codes for this whole process. Codes for genes that are going to allow us to induce autophagy. So basically it codes for these vesicles that have lower pH and when you have these vesicles that have lower pH, the proteins can degrade within that lower pH acidic environment and gets them out of there. Pretty wild. 
Then the next category, apoptosis. This is premature cell death, where a cell basically self-destructs completely. And this sounds like, why would you ever want a cell to self-destruct, to just go bye-bye? Well, here's the problem. Occasionally, cells become so mutated and so messed up that they are actually a threat to the body. It's just like you could have five people living in an apartment or in a house, all fine, getting along, and then all of a sudden, just one person just starts to kind of just go off their rocker a little bit. And they become a threat to everyone in there because now they're just a toxic person and they're dangerous. So sometimes they say, we're gonna burn the house down. That way everyone has to go find another home, right? Or they have to neutralize that cell, right? So you're neutralizing a threat by allowing it to self-destruct. So apoptosis can be a very good thing. Well, there's a study that was published in the journal Cell Death and Disease that took a look at FOXO3 and found that FOXO3 promotes the apoptosis of prostate cancer cells, okay? And it's starting to be investigated in terms of other cancers. It's too soon to say entirely, but they're even looking at it from a pharmaceutical side of things. How could we use this in a really positive way? Very good news there. So then we rope it all together. We look at the longevity piece because everything that I've talked about has been mechanistic. And there's been problems with mechanistic stuff. They're mechanistic. We need observational data. Well, there was an interesting study. It took a look at 11 studies. It was a meta-analysis with 5,000 people. They found that people that had gene mutations that forced FOXO3 to be elevated lived longer than those that did not. Does this mean that everyone needs to be a mutant? No. What this means is that when there were mutations, it upregulated FOXO3. The FOXO3 seemed to make them live longer. The cool thing is, is that we can actually create these mutations by inflicting stress upon ourselves. So how do you inflict stress upon yourself? Well, you quit your job, you start yelling absurd things and obscenities at every single person that you encounter on the street, uh, you go and you sit in your house, you turn the heat down all the way and you just cause stress. No, there's real ways that you can inflict stress upon yourself. Caloric restriction is one of the most heavily researched ways to inflict stress upon yourself activates AMPK, therefore activating FOXO3. Anyway, another piece is through what's called histone deacetylase inhibition. What does this mean? Well, there's a study that was published in the journal Science. Okay, it looked at histone deacetylase inhibition. When you are on a lower carb diet and you deprive your body of carbohydrates, you are inflicting stress upon yourself. Okay, this stress is one thing, but additionally, when you reduce glucose intake, you increase beta-hydroxybutyrate, ketone bodies. Ketone bodies increase the receptiveness of a cell or a, basically to be able to receive a transcription factor and express a gene. So basically you're unlocking more genetic potential. So basically you're allowing the FOXO3 gene to be more open for lack of a better term. So the presence of ketones allow FOXO3 to get activated easier. It doesn't mean you need to do keto, but it means that periodic times of low carb actually might have FOXO3 effects, benefits. That's a very good thing. Let's talk about a few other things that you can do. Cold exposure, okay, by creating uncoupling proteins and by creating the oxidative stress that comes with that, you upregulate, you increase that transcription factor of FOXO3, you increase that whole process, okay? Additionally, sauna, high heat exposure. Endurance exercise, also very powerful. Fasting, also very, very powerful. Okay, going to high altitude and living in a hypoxic environment or a hypoxic way where you're starving your body of oxygen occasionally, it forces an adaptation. So living at altitude, everyone should just move to the mountains. Actually, please don't. I live in the mountains and I like my peace and serenity there. But reality is going up to the mountains helps you. But also you could do things by exercising in an intense activity that increase hypoxia that allow your brain to really develop and get stronger. So I know this has been a long-winded way of saying stress yourself out, but stop viewing stress as a bad thing. Because as Angela Duckworth had said, from a psychology standpoint, it's our perception of stress that really causes the damage, not the stress itself. I'll see you tomorrow.